about that the Tylenol case. So we're back. <clears throat> we're gonna talk a little bit about um, something that's been going on. Um, I guess publicly already. I mean, it's it's it's, it's kind of going. I don't know if it's going viral, but for me, I think like they're they're trying to sweep it under the rug type of thing. So um, there was new research that came. Not new. It, they've been doing this for. The, this research for almost 20 years now. Um, they've been following people that took Tylenol uh, during the mothers that took Tylenol during their pregnancy. And there's now they're saying that there's there's a connection, a link between Tylenol and autism and ADHD, uh, meaning that during pregnancy, if you take Tylenol from a month to a, like a trimester, a trimester is, uh, th there's three trimesters in um, a woman's pregnancy, right? For every three months, nine months. So from one month to three months, you take Tylenol, they found a connection saying that there's a possibility that Tylenol, acetaminophen, can have a higher risk of having your your child be born with uh, autism. So acetaminophen is what Tylenol is. Well, yeah, Tylenol. So made from. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And just to get you um, have a better understanding of what autism is, it's a uh, developmental disability caused uh, uh, by differences in the brain. People with AD, um, ASD, you know, um, autism spectrum disorder is uh, often has problems with uh, social communication and interaction um, and restricted or repetitive behaviors or interests people with asd may also have different ways of learning moving or paying attention now this is the definition by the cdc the one that we no longer trust <laughs> right ever since covid but um Here's some examples of um, social uh, communication or social interaction characteristics. Um, the child uh, avoids or does not keep eye contact or does not respond to the name by the nine months of age, does not show facial expressions like uh, happy, sad, angry, surprised by nine months of age, uh, does not play simple interactive games like patty cake or 12, I, don't know, I don't know who plays patty cake anymore. But um, yeah, there's I'm, I'm gonna leave the link as well. But um, they have uh, delayed language skills or delayed movements and delayed cognitive and learning skills. Sometimes even hyperactive, impulsive or intentional behavior. Um, Epilepsy and seizure disorders, uh, unusual eating and sleeping habits. I don't, I don't even know if that's even something to talk about, but you know you can see anxiety and stress and like, excessive worry in people with uh, autism. And in, in the beginning, I thought that I mean, what was your your, your take on people with uh, that had autism? Uh, I I never looked it up personally, but I just felt like it was a just a slower. Um, What's the word? S Slower process of learning, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you 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 thought, right? Um, yeah. Actually, some of them are actually very really, very gifted. Mm. Yeah. Um, the, the, there's there's a good and bad, but everyone always sees the 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 bad the, first, the bad first the negative. Yeah. yeah. But um, wh why I'm saying this is that there's a lot of lawsuits out now, and if you might be eligible. Uh, if you for compensation, you know, for medical costs and bills and pain and suffering, mental health effects, lost wages or income, loss of enjoyment of life, you know, permanent disabilities. Like they're they're, they're trying to help out people that can uh, that have autistic children that can prove their case that they were taking acetaminophen uh, during uh, pregnancy. You know, there's a lot of research to back this up. I, I think they did about there was like. 26 research uh, uh, journals uh, out of like 29 that that basically said that uh, acetaminophen 
not causes, but that link. Because here's a word, right? People have to watch what they say when, when they say cause, cause and effect, right? Like you have to have like a 95 percent tile um, to, to prove that such and such causes versus correlation, you know? Correla correlation is, is kind of like uh, something that happens at the exact same time, but doesn't necessarily mean that it causes. It, like, like, like uh, there's, let me see. So John Hopkins is a university. Uh, they did research, and they said one out of 44 children are diagnosed with uh, autism disorder. And six million kids are diagnosed f with autism from what was it, uh, 2016 to 2019. Okay, and nearly nine percent of U.S. children are diagnosed with ADHD. N um, in this study, they they followed uh, people for like 20 years since 1998 to 2018. That's a long time, you know. Um, they were following them, and but here's the thing, right? They were following them, and they had questionnaires during this time um, w when this all occur not occurred. This is just recent findings, but through these recent findings, assert, um, research, um, they said that there's. Well, let me see. I gotta read this specifically. So a professor at Bloomberg School's Department of, of uh, Population, Department of Population, Family, and Reproductive Health. Her name was, I, I can't, I'm not even going to butcher it, Xiao Bin Wang, Wang. She says, this is besides the Tylenol thing, right? She says that people uh, that were obese during pregnancy have a higher chance of, uh, doubles the chances of having a child with autism and if you're obese and have diabetes the odds are quadruple that's four times the likelihood of your child having autism and they had a s small sample size of uh, 8,600 mothers that they followed all the way until the age of 21 uh, most of the mothers were obese have diabetes or hypertension hypertension is a high blood pressure and that they were just saying that there's these conditions that they have that have nothing to do with Tylenol, but that's just the overall picture of what they thought was before the whole Tylenol mm -hmm. era. And uh, now mm -hmm. uh, they're saying that taking Tylenol during pregnancy has asso uh, is associated with uh, elevated risk of autism and ADHD. Now, they're not saying it's black and white, but there's a case to be made. And I just wanted to share that is because there's there can be compensation, and when I say compensation, I I don't mean oh go, you know go go collect your money type of thing, you know. But there's there's people that are getting paid. I mean, the average is five hundred thousand dollars, you know. I mean, the lowest is like fifty thousand. But if you can make a strong case, say if you keep your receipts, you can keep you you have uh, uh, any type of evidence that. Depending on how severe the the autism is, right? There's people that are being compensated for five million to ten million dollars. So this is something for people to you know to to look out for. You know, I was I was mind blown, and as soon as I saw that article, my my buddy sent it to me through text. I shot it over to Carter, and, and Dan, I didn't even know how to respond to that. I was like, Yo, I gotta go share this. This is this is deep. You know, forget the ancient orange. Agent Orange, you know, it's, this is much more. This is, this is America. Well, not America, this is the world. That, you know, they did, they did lab studies on rats, uh, mice or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they, they, they saw uh, something with the brain with the, uh, the rats saying that their cognitive abilities weren't even there. They, that, that go hand in hand with, what the uh, con the symptoms of, of uh, autism look like in rats? So, um, yeah, I just man, I got too much information, but I'll, I'll link everything inside the description box below, man. I don't know I don't know what to say about or what to make of all this.
Yeah, just do do your own due due diligence and, and research and and, and just try to see where where it lands on yourself. I mean, if you know yourself as a a Tylenol user, and can can relate to it, then I, I would suggest dive dive a little bit deeper and see where it takes you. Um, I doubt anybody has the Tylenol receipts, but I mean, you, you get prescribed by the doctor. That's proof, in, you know. That's proof right there. I mean, doctors write prescriptions for Tylenol. It's, it's see. All I'm saying is this, right? Mm. From here on out, if you don't have to take acetaminophen, I understand that you know women they go through a lot, and and they they thought that acetaminophen was a, a safe thing to take. But now I just want you guys to think twice before you make that decision. You know, if if it's maybe there's an alternative like ibuprofen, right? That that's that's uh, something that. Uh, you can possibly look into. I mean, they actually did a study side by side with Tylenol and ibuprofen, and Tylenol showed severe cases of autism. Mm. You know, and they said that the risk in male children, right, before the age of two. Let's just say this, right? If after after pregnancy, after the the, the, the child is born, they said that there's evidence saying that there's forty percent. Uh, uh, increase of risk of having ASD among males in the US you know if your child is under two taking Tylenol so for now stay clear of Tylenol until you get you get the facts straight mm -hmm. you know that's something that I wanted to share and it's um, it's urgent this is something that that we shouldn't take lightly upon you know since 1990 right it's 1990 autism spiked up like dramatically um Dang, I got all this on the. I'll put it on the screen, but it's something that I don't even know how to. Dang, I wish I. You saw my reaction when I first found out, you know, but I, I'm so tired of of doing countless hours of research to present this. My wife kept saying, "Stop telling people to go look it up themselves," <laughs> you know. But I'm not a doctor. You know, and I, and all this research, they use such complicated words that I can't even, you know, comprehend. But whatever I'm telling you, there's there's other people that that are explaining it more well than I am. I'm gonna link all this stuff. You know, it's yeah. They they're making there's lawsuits for um, that that are taking case against well, what was the company? It was Johnson and Johnson. Right, those were the inventors of uh, of acetaminophen, and I forgot what the uh, McNeil, but um, these class it's a class action lawsuit, by the way. So hop on the wagon if you have evidence that can prove that you were taking Tylenol during your pregnancy. Um, during this time, uh, they did research with uh, these, I guess what, what do you call it? The, not the umbilical cord, right? They they took samples from the umbilical cord, but it doesn't really prove much. Is because Tylenol only lasts in your system for X amount of time, and you can't really say it's causation. And that's what they're trying to say. You know, uh, it, it might not be the case, but there's a strong case to be made, and they're trying to sue for failure to warn um, the the mothers, uh, general general negligence, uh, breach in express warranty, whatever that means, breach of an implied warranty. Uh, negligent misrepresentation, and and so so on. You know, so if you, yeah, if you took Tylenol or you plan on taking Tylenol, stop now. Find another one. You know, there's there's plenty of other things that you you can possibly take. Um, I I myself, I'm trying to figure out how to clear out the cupboards for Tylenol. Even even I had a headache the other day. I was hesitant to take it. Because I do know that every single do, time I do take Tylenol, I don't feel normal, though. I'll tell you that. I don't, I, I don't, when I feel better, but I don't feel normal still. I still feel like a s subtle high or, or a, a brain fog. I don't know about you. Well, what is your experience when you take acetaminophen? Uh, I rarely take it. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, I, I try to practice a natural route. I mean, I try to take nothing and just, I mean, people say with headaches, just drink more water. Sometimes it could be your dehydrate and yeah, but yes. water doesn't really cure it. I mean, it doesn't fix the problem. You have to have potassium and sodium to go along with it. Just to let you guys know, there's electrolytes. That's what the electrolytes is: it's uh, sodium and potassium. 
so it, it helps the brain just water itself it won't uh it won't do do much well yeah i don't, I don't get too many headaches luckily so i don't, I don't really pop any tylenol mm -hmm. i haven't probably popped tylenol in years or take any medication but isn't that mind boggling, boggling to you that one out of 44 or 59 kids have autism now yeah yeah for sure it's definitely something uh we're trying to figure out ourselves because like growing up like we did on the first episode it's like we talked about agent orange and all that and you're just trying to get to the root cause of things you know because i feel like at the end of the day that's that's what it is i mean you kind of got to backtrack of how your upbringing was and how you can relate and possibly rule out things because mm -hmm. i mean i feel like that's what doctors do i mean they, they, they try to figure out as much as possible about you and your life and they try to make recommendations on their studies and what works and please what don't blame work. the doctors because you know they were misled too as well i mean it's the pharmaceutical industry that 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 they're that's promoting this you know they 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 make commercials with with guys in lab coats and they're all hired actors you know to to pull this all off it's not actual doctors on on the screen trying to sell this stuff but at the same time doctors are afraid right now it's because they they fucked up they they prescribed something or they 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 told others to say it's okay it's safe just you know just go ahead and take this that they they'd rather do that than give you guys painkillers you know they don't want to give uh uh, oxys and and uh, whatnot, whatever it is that they they prescribe for pain relief and what is it? What what else are other pain relievers are out there? I don't know Advil. Oh. Well, a Advil is ibuprofen, so I actually would right. recommend ibuprofen. But then the thing about ibuprofen is too is that it, it can cause it's it's I think it's a blood thinner too as well. Right. Yeah. Right. So you gotta have kind of stay clear and, and and check up on your blood pressure and all that too as well. This point is. I mean, I don't know what to say. I can't tell you guys to suck it up because, you know, I've been in a lot of pain, you know, before in the past too, and Tylenol does relieve pain, but we, there's got to be other alternatives that we can find, you know, and if you guys know any other alternatives besides Tylenol for pain reliever and headaches and just, I mean, and fe fever reducers, you know? In general, just try to live a healthier life, healthier uh, lifestyle too, you know? Get that heart pumping, making sure that thing is working. Yeah, but they're pregnant. Oh, How? right. Right. I mean, I mean, I mean it's not, it's not a, their back is hurting. They're carrying a, a child yeah. in their stomach, yeah. you know what I'm saying, Yo, for nine months. Wrong. It is a, this is, I couldn't even imagine, you know? I could barely put a vest on at the gym. For, but there's you know, people out there doing it, though. Right. There's, right. there's plenty of women out there doing it that lives a, a better, I guess, it, it is better for yourself to, to be more active and making all you know your body a little bit better because the more active you are the more you work the heart in, in in a good way the more stronger it gets right mm -hmm. i mean so it, it pumps out the the blood and everything to, to the rest of your body so i mean yeah i mean i i know someone personally next close to me that was working out the whole time in a sense and, and really kept a good healthy lifestyle with exercise and stuff too while she was pregnant so Oh yeah, I seen I seen yeah. some girls at the gym when yeah. they were pregnant. I was like, dang, yeah, man. get they, it, man. You know, yeah. So. And, and and I was kind of shocked. I was like, damn, does that do it? They were doing cleaning jerks. You know what that is? Uh. -uh. It's, it's not after you 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 whack off and whatever. It's, 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 <laughs> I wasn't even it's, I wasn't even <laughs> close to that. <laughs> that was all you. <laughs> it's it, it's 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 when you when you lift her over your head and then you it's that it's that Olympic. Um, Olympic uh, press. Yeah, it's the overhead. Right, right. Yeah, I can't even explain it, but um, something for you guys to think about, man. That yeah, and 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 definitely that that helps with depression as well. I mean, when when they yeah, it, it boosts the dopamine levels up. Yeah, yeah. So go go exercise. You know, walk around more. You know, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and yeah, put in that work for your for yourself. You know, and not just for yourself, for your family, for your kids. For your loved ones, your friends, you know, because uh, yeah, they're depending on you to to be, be to be good, to not have to worry about you because that's the last thing what anybody want is uh, somebody to worry about them. So yeah, man. So I actually forgot to mention a couple of things um, about uh, about mental health. 
mm-hmm. going back to depression again sorry man keep bringing it back up I, I left this part out it's pretty important for those of, uh, of us who can't afford um, me- medical he- I mean have a good health plan right there's there's actually like a, you can google like community mental health centers right that will, will help out you look for a therapist for you um, I haven't done that myself I just um uh, was googling all all these facts and and uh, I don't know how much of it is true, but um, you know, there's nothing wrong. Th- there's something called a sliding scale. It means uh, that the the provider uh, w- will charge you something along the lines of something that you can afford. You know, so so it it makes it more available and more affordable to you. You know, e- e- even I mean, honestly, ask. Doctor, I mean the the therapists, they're they're in it because they want to help people, not just the money. You know, if you, if you just ask them, hey, I can't afford it, be straight with them, be real with them. And can you do anything with me? And can you give me a discount or whatever it is? I mean, some of them, will, will, a majority of them, unfortunately, the good ones are all taken. And they always are. Yeah, they they're taken, and you know that that's what sucks. But you know, I mean, it doesn't stop. It shouldn't stop you from continuing trying to to find that 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 perfect match, and there isn't going to be a perfect per- perfect match. Never. I mean, that's why I I iterated like try to always give like give yourself three best options, and then go with whatever you you veer towards more. You know what I mean? Like you you have to do that. You know, to to give yourself that due diligence of just shopping around for the right person. And then, yeah, you know, those three might not work out, but keep trying. But at the end of the day, you can't just ride with one and just expect them to figure everything out on, on, on the snap of a on finger. The, on the first visit. Yeah, I yeah. mean. They, it's it's like going to the gym, right? You, you, you kind of look at it like this. You're not going to get results right away, right? It's going to be a weekly thing, and it's going to take patience. You know, it's kind of like when you took that first day picture, you know, uh, when you went to the gym for the first time. And then three months later, I mean, when you're going day to day, you don't really notice it, right? But three months later, when you compare the picture from the very beginning to three months, uh, three months out, you're going to see a subtle difference in yourself. It might not be amazing, but there will be improvement. You know, so give yourself that, uh, you know, that time to, to give try your, to... Yeah, give yourself that chance, you know? Yeah. It's don't, like, it's like, like having a... <clears throat> For every outlet you need in life, you know, you need to you need to plug that up with something, right? And we're trying to figure it out. We're, we're as simple as a haircut. I'm getting messed up haircuts nowadays because I, I don't care for the price. You're unless, telling me what haircuts, man. Unless, unless I'm going somewhere nice. Yeah. You know, but my barber still can't get it right. But I'm paying fifteen dollars for unlimited haircuts. I, I ain't worried about it. <laughs> so it's like you know, if shopping for like a, for a, a a mechanic, you know, to change your oil. Mm-hmm. There'll be some shady ones out there. You just got to keep shopping until you work, find the right one to work with. When you say mechanic, right, don't expect like it's going to be you go into a mechanic shop and it's going to come out fixed. No. It's not going to work that Every way. Every mechanic is different. It's not going to be a like doctor. They're not going to prescribe something. Like therapy takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. Give it, give it some time. Eventually, you're going to pick up a thing or two, you know. And the, thing, the biggest thing about therapy is that being able to talk about it out loud and recognizing it and identifying certain things that could be the root cause, yeah, right, is key. It. Yeah, just to understand yourself when you verbally speaking out loud, because you don't want to share it with the homie, because you're afraid for judgment, you know. And that's the thing too. When you go see a therapist, I mean, me myself included, like you get afraid about what the other person is going to think if they don't react the way that you want them to react. But just have an open mind, man. You know. Open mind is 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 the key to get through the door, but learning how to really share is, is the hard part, and 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 revisiting these traumatic, you know, incidents that had happened to you, uh, you know, across your lifetime, it's not going to be easy. It's not. No, it's not. I mean, like, like I mean, you could just relate to like a car. You know what I'm saying? That car needs. You know that that every now and then tune up. You know what I'm saying, just to retune yourself and, and get mm. yourself in, on the right track and change that oil every three thousand miles. You know, and and change rotate your tires, stuff like that. Just kind of, if you want to think about it in a more, whatever relatable term or way, like you have to do these things for yourself and for your mental. You know, your your 
your mental is like one of the strongest things you need to keep sharp because of how it could just distract your whole life. And, and, and I had this like last December where I was going through uh, some financial troubles and I was getting like chain, uh, chest pains because mm. I invested into the stock market and blah, blah, blah. And then that tanked and like it was like weekly things of deep red, you know? And I was just like, okay, maybe next week, maybe next week. I didn't think of it. I was just like, next week is probably better, you know? I didn't, but in my in actuality, in my brain, I was like, okay, maybe I got to find another route now. I got to find a new, a better job now or another job now or something like that. But that was all going through my head. But when everything was happening, it was happening weekly. And then I was going to the doctors, like I checked into the ER. Mm. I did all this and that. Like, they well, did, did they the, ever tell you what it was? Yeah, so they ran EKG. You well, know, what is that? So the EKG is basically when they, when they test your heart, see how your heart is functioning. And then on one of the occasions where I was having uh, deep chest pains, I had went there and they said I was having a heart attack. I was I was mind boggling. It was mind boggling because I I, I, didn't, I didn't feel the chest pain anymore. So I was like, okay. So they were like, yeah, we got to rush you in right now. I, I got rushed in. What, did your blood pressure went up? How did they determine that it was a heart attack? I'm I'm curious. So they they, they strapped me up with all the uh, tests or whatever the um, the EKG. That's that's what they call it, where they they, they check out your heart rate and and they check on it to see how is it. How's it functioning or whatever? Mm -hmm. So at the time I was having chest pain, that's why I came into the ER, and it was like a reoccurring thing every week. So I, this time, my wife and I was just like, "All right, let's just go check it out." So went in, did that, and then like on third, the third time I had this chest pain, and then I went in, and then they were, they were, yeah, they rushed me inside to get my own room and all that, and then they ran all a bunch of heart tests. How are you feeling now? I'm fine now. Because I mean, it's only been a couple of weeks, right? It was like seven weeks back to back of my 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 financials decline. <laughs> so it was like I've never seen this. So then it was it was new to me. But at the same time, I, I I didn't think of it as anything. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at. It's like you never would know that this could be the cause of it. And then that's when I talked to my doctor. I was like, that's that's when I came out and told her like, it, it, could it be work related? And she's like, oh yeah, definitely. So that stress was on me and caused me to have those chest pains, which is a guess. And, and what did thinking. they? And what did they do to? Um... Well, they pre they pre they prescribed me all these type of heart things. So like, if I'm having a, if I feel like I'm having a heart attack, I take this pill, blah blah blah. If I'm having the chest pains again, I, I take this pill. Have you have you tried it? Yeah. And like, did it did it work? Did it... No. That's why it's like it's nothing related to, uh, the heart or whatever, but. Then again, I don't know. Like it, it could have been um, heartburn. Mm. A kind of acid reflex. Acid reflex or something. Mm. But yeah, like it was. It was a strange feeling that I was having. I was having chest pains too. Yeah. But I, that that was because I think it was uh, withdrawals. I stopped using drugs, mm -hmm. and then, like, I, I don't know what happened. It happened right here. Yeah. And then I was like, "Yo, what's going on?" And then my daughter started freaking out, and she just ran. And she went to go grab me some water. You know, and, and I was, yeah, yeah, I it was, was definitely serious, man. I mean, like I, I thought I was gonna die. I mean, and then on top of that, I went to the ER, and then they, they diagnosed me with, with having a little uh, heart attack or whatever it may be. I was like, what the, you know? Yeah, I thought a heart attack. Yeah, I thought like they say like. Yeah, I, I was. I thought the panic attack was a heart attack you know, at one point. But yeah, yeah. They, they say panic attacks don't feel like that. Like a chest pain, it was like a deep like mm. pressure right here in yeah, the middle I, of my I felt chest. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On New Year's Eve, that's when I when I had it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, what were you going through at that I, time? Withdrawal, I'm assuming. I right, didn't, I didn't right. do drugs since since Christmas or Christmas Eve. Right, right. So it was, it was a week out, and I felt something in my. I, I couldn't. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. For I, like only at five minutes though, right. and then, and then it went away. Then it came back. Like half an hour later again. Yeah, you know? see, so my chest pain was kind of going on for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then I was like, oh, fuck, all right, let, let's go to the ER. Let's, let's see what's, what's yeah. going on because I don't know what the yeah, hell going on. Yeah, if it was 15 on. minutes for me, I would have been out. Like, yeah, yeah, so, man, think about that. Like, I had that going on for like seven weeks straight. I went to the ER at least five, six times doing that because just to check it out. Just to make sure I wasn't dying and shit like that. So, yeah, man, your mental got to be sharp. And whatever you're dealing with in life. 
plays a big factor on what you're thinking about inside internally and could cause panic attacks, heart attacks, everything. So like your, your mental sharpness has to be there. Like you have to be, you know, ready to attack and handle these situations. That were you, occur. were you using anything at that time? I was using a vape pen. I was smoking mm, c- cigarettes. Yeah. So I, that's what I, cause I, this one time I, I had, I was sitting on the couch looking at my stocks and then I went to go walk my dog. Stop I went stop. to go walk my dog. It's something out of your control, man. And you I, shouldn't look at and it. And I was smoking a vape. So I came back down. So I thought it was the vape, not the 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 the, the stocks or whatever. So then that, that, that was what it was. And then later on, I finally was, was trying to figure it out. And I talked to my doctor. And, and then they were like, yeah, yeah. So that definitely could be the major factor of it. So then, like after seven weeks and then it kind of slowly crept back up and I was kind of less worried, I guess. And I never had those a panic or those pressures, chest pressures or whatever again. So yeah, man, um, that's just, like I said, I'm just trying to say like your mental game has to be really sharp and try to stay more focused on like a healthier and happier, positive freaking lifestyle. You know, don't get too wrapped up into what it is. And, and, and just let it go and know that it's going to be all right, you know. It's, it's going to be okay. That whatever you're dealing with is, is going to pass. Like all these damn storms right now. It's, it's going to pass one of these days. And, and just stay positive and, and keep it moving in, the, in that right direction. So, yeah, man, you know, that's what we're here for. We're trying to just give that more uh, awareness to whoever may need it. And, uh, yeah, and thank you for listening, everyone. Yeah, I, I, we appreciate wish, y'all. We wish uh, everyone a... Uh, Happy New Year's. <clears throat> um, stay safe. Stay warm. Um, do your very best to take care of yourself. You know, go see a doctor. Yeah. You know, uh-